G'day everyone, it is Curtis here and welcome to an on the back wheel video. Today I'm reviewing the Honda Africa Twin. Let's see if you should fork out your hard earned cash and buy one. Clearance is amazing. In today's video, it's going to be broken up into several sections. We're going to talk about the looks and build quality of the motorcycle, engine performance, suspension and handling, some things I like and dislike, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty whether or not I would buy one and if you should buy one. Before we get stuck in, I want to talk about the kind of riding that I have done on the Africa Twin. I've used it to commute to and from work, to meet friends at the movies in the pub, uh, cruisy adventure bike riding and also hard adventure riding. For me that includes a lot of off-road riding, going through twisties and even some single track and stuff where enduro bikes really belong. Okay, let's talk about the build quality and looks. I think it's undeniable that this is just a fantastic looking motorcycle. It's absolutely gorgeous from the paintwork to the decals. It looks like one of those old school DACA bikes, but um, you know, in new modern big form, it is a great looking motorcycle. Build quality wise, it is very well put together. Everything from the handlebars to the switch gear, uh, to your levers, the rear brake lever is a nice high quality item. I like that. And the same with the gear shifter. Even the the rear rack, nice solid unit. It's a well put together motorcycle. A couple of things I will mention is it's still got the big ugly rear fender extender on them. I don't know why they do that. I would get rid of that uh, just from a functionality standpoint when you're riding off-road it's not going to get caught on things and also a looks point of view. Uh, we've got twin seats here. Uh, this is the passenger seat, they're both separate. You can remove that and remove that separately. Uh, this seat also goes up and down your uh, rider seat. I like that option on the bike. The rear foot pegs are good quality and easy to remove if you don't want them. Uh, the rider's foot pegs are also pretty good quality, uh, a little bit small. Uh, they're rubber mounted and you can remove the rubber mounts. I will mention that the switch gear, while it's good quality, it's not premium like the new Triumphs, for example, with their beautiful tactile backlit switch gear. And that's kind of the Honda overall. It's very good quality. It's not like extremely premium, but you know what you're getting. It's good looking and well put together. Let's talk about the motor and how it performs. Now, this is gonna be indicative for a lot of things on the Honda. It's very good, but not amazing. When I first got on the bike, I thought it would have a little bit more pull. It's an extremely linear motor. It's got decent punch off the bottom, it keeps pulling up top, but that's not an arm stretcher. The thing is though, you look down and you're doing way faster than you thought you would have been, <laughs> so you need to be careful. The bike kind of just lopes along at highway speeds, it really chugs and cruises nicely, so you need to be wary of that. I suppose it's a bit deceptive. Yeah, it's not amazing, it's not particularly exciting, but it does the job well. Here's another thing, it sounds fantastic, especially for a stock exhaust, it's got a burble and a bit of fruit to it. They've done a good job with the sound of the bike. I love to hear it with a pipe, I think it'd be pretty mean. On the bike, you're able to change the power modes, engine braking, wheelie control, and traction control. I do like the traction control and wheelie control. They're not very invasive, which is something I like. Uh, however, they still work. So the wheelie control will give you a little bit of give. You can actually do wheelies down the road on it, uh, and then you can turn it off completely. The same with the traction control. And the traction control, I didn't find it really kicked in at all on the road, which I like. Just works smoothly and doesn't interfere. The fueling, it is a little bit on offy down bottom and in small throttle openings. It can get a bit snatchy, especially when you're riding off road. Yeah, see that? Bit jerky. Just throws you off balance a little bit. I tried all the power settings, but most of the time I'd leave it in the most aggressive or the second most aggressive if I was like really tired and riding home. Gearbox and clutch, I really liked both. No issues there at all. Both work well. 
Suspension wise, thank you Honda for setting up a bike with correct spring rates. Check the gear. Hit that again on purpose. Tell you what, that was bloody good. The suspension, way better than I thought it would be. Not bottoming out much at all, smooth, compliant. A lot of bikes nowadays, you get on them and they're like a marshmallow. This is set up nice and firm, but it's still compliant and it has a lot of adjustability. For me, I'm 90 kilograms without gear on and it's pretty well spot on. I had a little bit of a preload into it from the stock base settings and I will bottom it out if I'm doing silly stuff off-road, but overall I would say it's very good and even then I can add a bit of preload into it. For most riders, I think this is going to be pretty spot on. If you're riding two up, crank in the rear preload and it should be pretty good. Uh, if you want a cruisier, softer setting, you can adjust that out as well. For me, I found that it deflected a little bit off-road, uh, pretty hard at times, so I've adjusted that out a bit and it's not too bad. Overall, I really like the suspension on the bike. It's not amazing and not a magic carpet ride, but I'd be very happy to just leave it and tweak it as I go along. A lot of people have asked me if the bike feels top heavy, and I wouldn't say it is. It is a big motorcycle and it is 230 kilograms, so if you're doing slow off-road work, uh, pushing the bike around the garage or in car parks, yes, it is a bit of a handful, just because it's 230 kilograms. However, once the bike is going and you're in flowy trails, I wouldn't say the bike is top heavy. It's a very neutral handling bike. It's good in the twisty, stable on the highway. I really like how the Africa Twin handles. Let's talk about the brakes. The fronts are absolute stonkers and they work fantastic on the road. I also like the rear brake position. It's really easy to use with boots on. Here's the big bugbear though. I don't like the ABS at all. Uh, I've mentioned it in previous videos in detail. Briefly, I'll touch on it. Once the front gets even slightly flighty, it activates the front ABS even when you just touch the front brakes. Uh, ABS activates quite easily off-road, even in the off-road setting too. Up we go. Oh, Biko, ABS. Oh, this ABS, when the tire gets remotely off the ground, starts to work, or when the front gets flighty. Oh, that ABS. ABS just kicks in all the time in the front. Gives you the shit. It's dangerous at times and I don't like it at all. I wish you could deactivate all the ABS, not just the rear ABS. No doubt you can just pull the fuse, but when you're on a motorcycle that costs this amount of money and has the safety features it does, you want to be able to use them as well, especially when other motorcycles do it better for cheaper. Let's talk about some things I like about the Africa Twin. First up, I like how you don't have to use premium fuel. This may not sound like a big deal, but when you're out in the middle of nowhere in the country, some of the servos just don't have premium fuel. Also, you can use E5 and E10. And here's the thing, with fuel getting so expensive at the moment, it's just good to be able to do the cheaper option. Cruise control, I used to poo-poo that on motorcycles. However, once you use it, it's an absolute game changer. And the one in the Africa Twin works quite well. At first, I found it to be a bit of a reach to turn it on, but then I found out that you only have to turn it on once, and then even if you turn the bike off and on, it's still activated, and then you just turn it on and off, uh, you know, set and reserve, then go up and down speeds. It works very well. Reliability. The Africa Twin has been around for a while now, first as a 1000 and now as the 1100. It has a rock solid reputation for reliability. Another thing I really like about the Africa Twin is how versatile it is. If you want to do two up riding, it's got a nice rear seat, it's got more than enough grunt to carry two people comfortably and some luggage. If you want to cruise to and from work, it's a nice commuter. If you want to cover big Ks and cruise down the highway, it'll do it all day. And then if you want to go off road and be a bit silly, it's got you covered. Let's talk about the things I don't like about the Africa Twin. First off is the air filter access. I know some owners have said, oh, it's not too bad, but objectively it is compared to other motorcycles. You're gonna take this whole panel off, a bit of the front off and do it on the other side as there's two uh, air filters. Bit of a pain and for someone like me who doesn't have much time to ride already, I don't wanna be fiddling with changing air filters. I don't like how you have to pay for a quick shifter. 
For $24,500 right away, I think this bike should come with a quick shifter stock. I mentioned earlier that the bike has Apple CarPlay in Android Auto. It works well overall, but when you're riding off-road in rough terrain, it disconnects the USB as it has to be connected and then it clears the dash and you have to reconnect it all, all the time. It's also worth mentioning that I have been able to connect my earbuds up to the Android Auto. I've got a big brand Jabra, so I don't know why it won't. I've Googled it and haven't been able to find a solution. And here's something I didn't think I'd have to bring up. Fuel economy. I've averaged 5.9 litres per 100 kilometres on this motorcycle. Yes, I do a fair bit of off-road riding, but I've also done easy commuting to and from work, highway work, and basic off-road riding. So I'd want that to be a bit lower. Let's just go over some more details on the bike that are worth mentioning. Grand clearance is very good and everything is nicely tucked away and it is quite narrow at the base. Uh, the stock bash plate is okay for basic riding. If you're doing serious off-road riding, I would look at upgrading it. Stock handguards are absolutely terrible. I don't know why they bother on such expensive bikes. Even with the smallest off, I broke my front brake lever uh, and they're not too cheap either, by the way. Wind protection, I'm six foot and get hit pretty much straight here in the chest and up. Uh, one good thing is though it doesn't buffer even with my noisy helmet. All right everyone we're into the nitty gritty. Would I buy the Honda Africa Twin? Unfortunately I'm in the no camp. The ABS alone is a deal breaker for me. I do a lot of off-road riding and frankly it's dangerous. Then we got the air filter access. As I mentioned, I do a lot of off-road riding, so I'm gonna check it regularly. And frankly, I don't have enough time to go riding as it is, let alone be checking air filters and taking half a bike apart. Then we got the dash. It's fiddly to use, uh, and I love the Android Auto. However, when you're riding off-road, it disconnects a fair bit, which is an absolute pain. And then I can't even connect my earbuds to listen to music <laughs> anyway. I know that's minor, but all those things add up. So unfortunately for me, it's a no. And that's, that's sad because I do like the bike overall and how it feels. I like how it's just a big dirt bike. The next question is, should you buy a Honda Africa Twin? Well, that depends on the type of riding you're doing and the conditions you ride in. If you're not riding in such dusty, hot conditions, the air filters probably aren't as much of an issue for you. Or if you like tinkering in the garage and having a beer or two or a cup of tea and taking it apart and taking your time going over the bike, may not be an issue either. The ABS, that's up to you. I think it's dangerous off-road. If you want to look into disabling somehow, go for it. There are also other options people have got online where there's modules where you can deactivate everything really easy with the click of a button. So that's something to look at. But here's the thing guys, there's so many good adventure bikes on the market nowadays, you can and should be picky. So here's some questions for you guys. Would you buy a Honda Africa Twin or do you own a Honda Africa Twin? Let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't, make sure you check out my other videos on the Africa Twin. I had an absolute blast riding this off-road and going places where it doesn't belong. If you haven't, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I've got plenty more motorcycle reviews coming this year. More bikes from Honda, CF Moto 450 MT. So make sure you click that subscribe button. All right, keep it on the back, everyone. Catch us.